a flag for a new socialist nation. Now, in the um, recently in Texas, you've probably heard about another lesson that was um, taking place in Lumberton Independent School District, where the students were asked to dress up in burkas. Um, that was a part of CISO. It was. Um, the idea that they would be learning about different world religions. And so that photograph was put onto Facebook and it went viral. Right now, Lumberton Independent School District is reviewing the purchase of CSOAP next for next year. Now, I, I want to make a mention about this because when we talk about CSOAP, a lot of people say, why? You know, why are school districts buying this? Actually, you might be interested to know that they're not buying it. Every single year, they're spending millions and millions of your tax dollars to lease CISCO over and over again. So you're actually not purchasing it, and there's a lot of things we could do with that money instead. In any event, just today before I came here, uh, there was another test question that came out asking our students why we were attacked on 9-11. And there were various answer choices given, very subjective opinions like, well, some people in the world don't like Americans. Well, terrorists hate everyone. But the answer that the students had to choose to be marked correct on the test was that America, the United States, the country that I love, that my father fought for in World War II, has done a lot of things around the world to cause us to be attacked. Now, um, someone mentioned earlier data mining. We give a lot of tests in C-Scope, and one out of every five instructional days in Texas is spent testing and gathering data on students. There is a project, um, the federal government asks that K through 20, that your child, that data is collected on your child. Now notice it's K through 20, not K through 12, or not while they're in school, and not while they're public school students either. If they're homeschooled students, the federal government wants to mine data on them as well, but it's K through 20, and it follows them into the workplace. Now, uh, in Texas, our state project is called Project Share, and so CISCO feeds data into Project Share. And so some parents say, well, what's the big deal? You know, if you have a Q folder, you have test scores, so what's the big deal if they record them in a computer? Well, because they're not interested in test scores. They're interested in everything. If your child goes to the nurse, if your child, what they eat for lunch, if your child was born premature, if your family goes to church on Sunday, they're interested in knowing everything. Every time your child sits down behind a piece of technology in school, it's all being recorded. Every choice that they make, or what choices they didn't make until the computer recycled through it and they finally made the correct choice. So um, CISCO is not, has not been previewed or vetted by our State Board of Education. One of my fears is that right now the State Board of Education is reviewing CISCO, but I don't want people to get a false sense of security and feel like they're going to fix it all up and everything is going to be fine. So what we're trying to do here tonight is just give you an idea that maybe you would like to learn a little bit more about this. And I'm, more, I'm kind of an action person, so I'm interested in what people can actually do. Um, so we're, what we're looking at is finding people that might be interested in rolling up their sleeves and coming to a very short workshop. If you have an hour to spare, that would be great. You can learn more about it, and most importantly, learn what you can do to make a difference. And before I close today, I would just like to say that I'm a big fan of our republic, and I'm a big fan of using our government. I, I really believe that we can make a difference. Every single one of us can. And I'm the first person to want to say, hey, I'm going to call my senator about this, and I'm going to try to make a difference. But there's something really special about CISCO, and that is that it's happening in your local schools. And the key word here is local, because our state legislators are not going to get on a white horse. And they're not going to ride over here to Bastrop or Elgin or Smithville or, you know, and they're just not going to ride up and save us. Because we pay property taxes to those schools, and when our kids get on the bus, they're going to the schools that we are stakeholders in. 
And so this is a local problem, and we really, really have to basically look at how we can um, recapture our local schools. And I, I believe that we can do it. So if you're interested in knowing more about this, I would really like to have an email or a name or something. I'll have a piece of paper in the back. I'm going to hang around so you can come up and ask me questions. And we'll try to make it at a convenient time so you can learn more about it if you're interested. But listen, thank you so much. I really appreciate that you spared the time today to listen to our have. Bank of New York. And if you know anything at all about the Fed, the Federal Reserve System, 
you'll know that they, all the 12 member banks take their lead from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Uh, it dominates then this unknown agency that you don't know anything about, is not elected, okay, uh, controls our Federal Reserve System. It also was created to handle the black budgets, the off the books money of the CIA, the NSA, the DIA, the NRO, some 25 alphabet intelligence agencies that we have to live under. Remember under uh, this old Soviet Union, uh, they only had one, the KGB. We got about 25, and we're funding them, and we don't even know what they're doing in our name. All right? And also, the financial, uh, the Exchange Stabilization Fund was also the founder of these two monetary groups that I know you've heard of, and that is the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. Now, folks, this is incredible, tight, central control over the entire world, and you've never even heard of that. Uh, it's incredible. Um, Timothy Geithner, of course, out there, and before that, he was in bed with Coleman Sachs. Um, the next one that you have not heard about is the Financial Stability Board. And this is just as bad. This uh, was created in uh, 2009 in April, signed on to by President Obama. And we won't even go there. Obama, of course, wants to take away our guns and, and, and says everyone should have a background check. Well, let's start with him. Yeah. 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 So in April 2009, President Obama goes to the G20, which is the meeting of all the central bank uh, bankers of the G20 nation, the 20 uh, major industrial nations, and he signs us on to the Financial Stability Forum, which was simply a name change from the Financial Stability, uh, um, I'm sorry, it's now the Financial Stability Board. It used to be the Financial Stability Forum, and it was a part of the Bank for International Settlements, which was a Nazi-run bank. If you want to read all about the BIS, uh, get my book, The Rise of the Fourth Reich. Um, it's, uh, and so now, the idea of the Financial Stability uh, Board is to standardize, make stable, all of the economies of these G20 nations and see that they conform to the board's uh, criteria. The uh, chairman of the FSB is uh, Mario Giorgi, uh, who is the governor of Italy's central bank. Um, and before that, he was a former executive of Goldman Sachs. And then also with him, was former Secretary Henry Paulson, also a former employee of Goldman Sachs. This is when you hear people say the bankers are running the world, I'm telling you, here's how, okay?